welcome to the damn good marketing podcast and welcome to small talk with raincraft what's happening here who are you and who am i i think the poor audience are so confused guys we are giving you two podcasts in the same duration as listening to one as some of you may know our podcast journey is very closely intertwined hasita runs the damn good marketing podcast where i am the co-host and subha runs small talk with raincraft and she's been doing it for about 4 years now where i am the co-host so today we thought i mean why does only shonda rhymes get to do this we'll do a crossover and therefore grace and atomy in season 19 have influenced us to do this crossover <laughs> yes it does feel like a big deal in our heads <laughs> So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of y'all. This is our little gift. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being on this ride with us. Asita, I got your very gentle reminder that you're going on a Christmas break. So I'm sure you have a lot of things planned. What are you up to? Uh to be honest, I think this time Subha, it's not travel plans. It's not, you know, exciting plans in that sense, but I am excited. because most of my plans involve uh, binge watching content on several ott platforms and before you ask yes i am a bit of a binge watcher uh, especially mm-hmm. when celebrities who we've kind of placed on a pedestal all this time are coming down to earth in some ways and telling their story and they're promising hey this is my true story i think uh, to me that sounds a lot more exciting than uh, any trip that i can take Oh that's saying a lot but it's true there's like a explosion of storytelling right there's an explosion of uh, a lot of people kind of finding their voice uh, and thinking about telling their version of the truth i mean some choose to call it the truth but it's still their version of the truth uh, and yeah. i think it's important it's um, to give us as an audience as someone who's you know maybe supported them been their fan give us a, a more genuine and honest glimpse of their lives like i get it it's still like you know it's still an airbrush glimpse but like you know at least you're hearing it from the horse's mouth so to speak like we've had so many instances i mean harry and megan on netflix is apparently the most watched docu series on netflix in its first week and i can totally see why i mean uh, truth bombs are being dropped left right and center it's only that they haven't taken names otherwise everything is out in the open uh, and which I, i mean i have so many thoughts on harry and megan but also uh, you know um, but also malaika arora has her own show and i never thought i would you know quite enjoy maybe watching her true story like i'm barely 20 minutes in and i get the sense that there's something there that's worth paying attention to yeah i think we all see initially just what um, their work you know their body of work shows us so we see her as uh, an item number dancer and we see her on top of the train in chaiya chaiya and that's that's pretty much all that she is but um, to get there to get to the point where you get opportunities like that or what really do they make of opportunities like that and how does life go on after it and maybe the yeah. next such train ride comes after a long time so how are they managing it all of that is i don't know like sometimes are we like peeping through the window it feels a little uh, yeah am i up to but honestly i think if we, we really are peeping through the window then the window is becoming larger by the day right first we had the editorials and the femina magazines and the you know harper's bazaar and the wogs of the world uh now with the advent of social media we get a little more of an insight into who they are and how they do it uh, which is to live their extremely public lives uh some people i think have learned how to use social media very well uh, to great effect i would say uh samantha ruth prabhu the south indian mm-hmm. actress is a great example of someone who's maintained some semblance of authenticity through the whole uh, trials and tribulations of the last couple of years even while she was so actively there on social media Mm-hmm. right uh, but then i think the next wave of content creation and we are also a part of it in some ways is the whole audio video media uh, you mm-hmm. know of sharing things of you know giving you more nuanced perspectives and mm-hmm. what i notice is that with the advent of ott platforms it's become that much easier right yeah. like a z as a tv network 
may not be able to produce a show that five as an OTT platform can still have the leverage to put out there. So the way we tell stories is changing so foundationally, I think. Oh, so, so true. And it's interesting that around the same time, I'm speaking to quite a few business leaders um, business leaders, senior managers, founders who are also grappling with how do I tell my story because mm. it has become kind of an environment where the story is more and more coming to center stage and it's becoming important. So they're asking that I've done all the hard work, I've done the grunt work. Now, how do I make sure that kind of my version of the story is out there and it is able to attract the audience that I want, the investor that I want, the kind of talent that I want on board. Uh, yeah. And also, how do I use it within the organization that I'm in, right? How yeah. do I yeah. kind of climb that proverbial ladder by making, Le- by making that. advantage of, of, the, of the, like I'm not telling enough stories, like more than one person has told me in the last uh, couple of weeks that I'm not telling my story and hence someone in the organization who is determining whether I move up or down or sideways doesn't really know who I am and what all has gone through, uh, you know, bringing me to where I am today. Yeah. And honestly, it's true of the world outside as well. I mean, as a marketing consultant, uh, I've begun to notice that personal brands, if I could call it that, is really the last stand that you can take in a world that's just increasingly becoming crowded on so many different levels. Who you are and how you share that with, again, you know, those stakeholders that matter the most to business. In my context, I've mostly seen customers or investors, right? So it's Mm. one of the two or, I mean, both in some instances. And it's not completely untrue to say that a lot of these transactions, a lot of these sales, a lot of these pitches happen in the context of what is the most outrageous story that you can tell and whether you have the gumption to back it up in some ways, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. we've seen this, we've seen this with, I mean, to take a slightly negative example of, you know, how story over sheets any day, right? Like no one is reading an Excel sheet, but they're listening to, you know, your pitch. Elizabeth Holmes is such a brilliant example of how you can actually sell something that doesn't exist simply by the power of continuing to tell a strong utopian story, right? And I'm sure she's just one among many, right? So true. And I think as a coach, I am hearing more and more that unless I learn how to tell my story, I think I will get, you know, left behind. I think, uh, you know, the, the competition today is not just kind of your immediate peers, right? There are, there's a lot of young blood joining the organization. They know how to tell their story a lot more, right? They've grown up with social media. They've grown up with, you know, yeah. knowing how to craft that LinkedIn post or uh, knowing how to really tom tom a bit in a good way, you know, not, not, yeah. Yeah. not bragging or boasting but just genuinely saying hey this is this happened and this is what I think about it and that's a little bit of the secret sauce right a lot of us uh, the storytelling comes second and first is having that point of view Mm -hmm. having that nuanced kind of understanding of a subject or at least be willing to explore a subject and then having your point of view And with that point of view, you want to tell a story that, hey, this is what I think or this is what I believe, right? The story doesn't come out of thin air. The story is not the, you know, just a headline. It it has to have substance. Oh, and you know, the funny thing is a lot of people actually have enough to tell stories around. That's what I've realized. You know, uh, the founder of a manufacturing company is actually an avid skier and uh, has played cricket at the state level, right? Mm. Uh, the third generation successor in a you know import export business is actually one of the most brilliant wildlife photographers I've met in my life, right? So I think we are all already in charge, and you know we have the ability, rather mm. I would say, 
it's mm-hmm. just that sometimes especially as we try to do work you know in the context of hey we say you if you don't put yourself out there then who will uh, mm-hmm. you know me saying you know maybe i'll put in a pr piece for you once or twice or thrice but beyond that it's really on you to continue to tell that story but i think i see now why a lot of people struggle with actually doing it right you may take the first step you may take the second step but then you kind of shy away because probably what you said subha is true for a lot of us that a sometimes we don't recognize that we are in charge or we are in possession mm-hmm. of all of these stories mm-hmm. and b then comes the next question how do i tell it right yeah. i've never done it before i've never kind of put myself out there i've just been the quiet person in the room going about my things things get done things get done better than they were supposed to uh, beyond that i don't really you know uh, put in some kind of additional effort into going and telling four people hey by the way did you know i did this and also maybe i come from a, a time or a period in the workplace that tells me that doing that is wrong right like do you want to be seen as somebody who's you know uh, trying to get a promotion actively right mm-hmm. uh, i know there are less pleasant ways of saying that and i'm trying not to say that on the podcast <laughs> but essentially we've all been accused of you know advertising ourselves if i could call it that yeah so how do we break some of these mental patterns or i don't know maybe break is a very strong word but how do we get over some of these limitations that we've imposed on ourselves and uh, where do we find in ourselves the ability to tell that story really mm. i think first is just to remind yourself because if you are at a stage where you're thinking about how do i tell my story then my sense is you've already done or are continuously doing the groundwork right you're yeah. continuing to be good at what you do you're continuing to build that brand or that business or that team uh, and the work is happening right so mm-hmm. it's not that you have come suddenly to say i want to tell a story and there is nothing to back it up so one remind yourself of what that foundation is right yeah. uh, many of us have to actually sit down maybe just list out the 20 30 things that you've done over the last 5 6 years what's that common thread what is yeah. emerging what is the pattern that uh, is actually sitting right in front of me but i i yeah. didn't realize right that i've so kind of converted so many um, you know difficult customers into long term customers or uh, i have been the one who's gone into business after business or vertical after vertical and been the turnaround person right and they've mm-hmm. been putting me in that i saw it as oh god why are you moving me from this unit to that but they moved me there because you know the unit 2 was in trouble and i was the one who could go and resurrect yeah, yeah. it right but all of these threads you will sometimes we just don't see it because we're so busy moving on to the next one so first you really do have to take stock hmm 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 and as i think about taking stock i think that, and this is something that we tell a lot of folk uh, that we work with it's not so important that you have it in a journal format or it's not so important that you've kind of you know uh, documented it somewhere it just sometimes simply comes down to that shift in perspective itself of saying you know whether it's me or whether it's my company and in some cases both are interchangeable especially if you're a small business uh, the why just needs to be consistent throughout right and we've seen that with brands like slurp farm and mama earth where the founders have kind of understood and accepted that the company is born because i faced this problem mm-hmm. and therefore i solved it in this manner and that's going to be the value in on which the brand is built like mama earth for example i think both uh, co-founders have spoken extensively about a child with sensitive skin and they were unable to find products to match that requirement in india so they mm-hmm. said why don't we start a line of our own and i can personally vouch for the fact that they are brilliant products right mm-hmm. because somewhere that faith in the product has translated from that story and the other example that comes to me is one uh, of a brand called cosmics wherein uh, the founder vibha harish she kind of came out and said hey we've changed the composition of some of our products because i always thought that if it was a good product it didn't matter how it tasted people would continue to use it but i've been taught that habits can only be formed by the taking the path of least resistance and that's why some of our powders are going to taste a little nicer we are still you know keeping our promise of zero additives we are not going to add sugar we are not going to add things that will make it 
taste good artificially. But it is a problem that I've kind of, you know, paid attention to and solved. And somewhere I find that these stories uh, are rooted in reality, right? It's not so much that, hey, I, you know, used to write since the age of 10, perhaps, which is true in my case. I mean, my first published essay was at that point in time. But what have I done with that? Right. So the real story, I think, for me is that I got published and then my dad paid me my first paycheck for that story. Mm -hmm. Right. And that showed me that, hey, I could make money writing. And I think some ways the rest is a small, tiny portion of my personal history. So, (laughs) So, yeah, to be rooted in truth, I think, makes a lot of difference. Yeah. And we all have these stories. We just, uh, you know, we're so busy in a way, creating the next one or being part of the next one that we forget what's actually brought us here and what what can we tell and what can we take away from it, right? And once yeah. you find that thread, um, it's about putting it out there authentically in whatever medium you're comfortable with. I mean, not everybody has to start a podcast or do a, a vlog yeah, yeah. and you know, really be out there. It's about in your organization, in in meetings, in gatherings, in conversations with your teams or in small groups over uh, at the canteen, right? Um, how are you able to inspire someone else sitting next to you or how are you able to share your achievements in a meaningful way um, keeping in mind who they are and what context is theirs also yeah, yeah. Right? That, that you don't want to be that boring boss that's forever just you know narrating story <laughs> yeah yeah Anybody? and it can never begin with hey by the way I have a story to tell like it doesn't work like that right like it's so contextual yeah yeah but uh, I think this is a skill which we know that uh, for the last few years, at least since more media channels and avenues of expressing yourself have opened up, uh, storytelling is a very, it, it, it is also like a business, right? There are folks teaching yeah. you how to storytell. And, uh, you know, don't shy away from it. Storytelling is one, it's not just about um, speaking well or uh, you know, having all these exciting incidents in your life, like in an organization context, looking at a lot of the data and really being able to say, okay, what is emerging from this? Painting yeah. that picture is a huge skill, right? Yeah. Um, you know, last week I was in a conversation with um, an executive and her manager. And the feedback that she got was that, you know, at some point, the data is just getting dumped on me Mm. for me to make, do, you know, what I want with it. But the expectation is that you're able to paint the picture that you want me to see. What are you convinced about in this data? What is it screaming out to you? And hence, you want me to see it, right? And those are very, very important skills in the workplace today. One, not just to stand out, but also to get things done to influence people to make them believe in what you are saying and how you believe what you think the next step or next course of action for the business needs to be true and i think also in the marketing context sometimes the whole skill of storytelling has been hyped up to such an extent that we've begun to feel like it's the domain of the few like only some people can go out there and tell a good story and the rest of us are just doomed to absolute nothing Mm -hmm. less Sometimes it all exists on a spectrum, right? And because we've made it up to be this huge thing, which needs a coach and a guru and a this Mm -hmm. and a that, we Mm -hmm. forget that we are all products of stories. The earliest human beings bonded around a campfire by telling each other stories. Uh, A lot of the texts that we've read and grown up on are stories. You know, the authors that we admire, they've all started somewhere telling a story. In fact, uh, about Harry Potter, there's an extremely well-known example. Uh, But I thought I should call out the fact that J.K. Rowling was rejected innumerable times before (laughs) Bloomsbury decided to publish her first Harry Potter book, right? So it's not so much that we don't have it. Sometimes we have to have some faith in it. Uh, And the three pillars of storytelling, which is context, setting and mic mic drop, so to speak, they will always remain the same, right? And if you notice some of Barack Obama's speeches, you'll see that, right? He's got this way, even if he says only two sentences, you'll see the context, you'll see the setting in which it happens and you'll see the mic drop moment happen. So there are ways to learn it, I think, in ways that we like. 
for me, one great way to learn and sometimes be inspired is to just be out there in the world and talk to some people whom I probably like the other day I was in Pondi and I offered a 500 rupee note uh, to a tea seller in the morning, feeling all embarrassed. But uh, he kind of uh, had changed for it. And that was quite surprising because I had not expected my world is one where you pay the tea seller as much as he's due. Right. So these are, you know, places from which you can obviously draw inspiration. And I'm sure it's different for different people. Right. So where do you find your stories from? Yeah. And I think the and I think you mentioned Barack Obama and what I always take away from whatever he says, small or big, right? Don't forget that dash of humor, right? Make it yeah. <laughs> exciting, fun, memorable for the person listening to you, right? Um, no matter what he says, and especially in his more informal appearances and, you know, talk shows and etc., there is such great sense of the fact that I need to tell the story, but I need to tell it in a way that it sticks right? Yeah. And so there's that perfect little dash of humor. So, uh, I mean, humor doesn't come naturally to all of us, but if you just start enjoying the story that you're telling, yeah, it will come yeah. back much more easily, right? The, the smile will come on your face and then uh, a little kind of joke that you can tell about it or you, how you can make it a little um, exciting and interesting and uh, spicy oh. for your audience. I think that in a lot of, in the corporate context, a lot of I mean, they really folks could just lighten up a little bit, I think. I agree. In fact, just I think uh, the next corporate outing should be to a stand-up comedy show. Then I think it's probably going to help to some extent because these are the creative outlets from which you kind of pick up uh, Tanmay Bhatt, who happens to be my neighbor now, apparently. Uh, maybe I'll see him on one of my walks if I walk. Uh, he kind of uh, put a post out on LinkedIn saying, hey, we're looking for a podcast production uh, intern to work with us because I'm building XYZ. And then someone commented underneath saying, uh, firstly, with you don't have a strong idea. Uh, and that's where you'll... So he was trying to diagnose the problem a little bit. And Tanmay responded to that and said, thank you for not applying. And I thought that was just such a brilliant... It's so Tanmay, right? He is the kind of guy, he will laugh at other people's expense and he'll laugh at his own expense as well. Just that little, I think, dash of authenticity sometimes in terms of yeah. what you're cracking jokes on also yeah. matters a lot. Yeah. yeah. So on that note, let's head into 2023 with a little bit of a smile on our face and little laughter and giggles and a lot of gratitude to all our listeners for both so the Damn Good Marketing Podcast and Small Talk with Raincraft. So glad that you're tuning in you're writing in, telling us that you heard what we had to say and you're leaving reviews and really, really thank you. It means a lot. That's been the best bit about this entire journey, I think. Just hearing back from folks uh, that it helped or, you know, hey, this is where I have a problem. I'm completely okay with that. Hey, this is my bone to pick with you. Because at least it means that we've thought of something and I think we've made someone else think on on that account so thank you so much for tuning in to today's crossover episode between the damn good marketing podcast and the small talk with raincraft and we will see you in the new year we've already got a hugely amazing lineup at least in our heads uh, by the way that's the last pillar of storytelling guys if you don't treat it as larger than life then who will right so exactly. make sure that you make it big and we are making it big this year so thank you so much Thank you. Happy New Year and thanks Chandra Rhymes for the idea. Bye. <laughs>